What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today it is episode number 98. Seven, nine, 97. I'm not sure. I'm not seven. sure. Seven, what the 97. Is. It's, it's 97. episode 97. Thank you for checking, Everett. But what a weekend of sports, Everett. We had some UFC, Jake Gyllenhaal making his debut in the octagon. We had, you know, NFL Combine, kind of a pretty notable event in the NFL, had some NFL free agency and, you know, some, some big names or I guess big name on the trading block too. But there's a lot to talk about today, but we have to start with the UFC. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but you know, I've got to rep my merch right now. This is a John Jones shirt. I would turn around and show you the back, but I'm too lazy and I'm not going to, but John Jones is the undisputed goat. All right undisputed goat of ufc but we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about jake gyllenhaal okay looked very impressive in his octagon debut landing a first round tko and potential murder too so they're making a remake to roadhouse and yeah i'll i'll just come out and admit roadhouse is not a movie i've seen there's a lot of other I'm, really notable I ones that i've never seen, seen. Uh, not apparently seen in the start of roadhouse there's the main guy gets into a bar fight and kills somebody in the bar fight. That's how it all starts. So this one is in the ring. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Roadhouse, they didn't just spoil the ending to their movie. And I'm going to assume that Jake Gyllenhaal's character, this is the start of the movie where he kills somebody in the ring. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would say a flying knee to the forehead followed up with just a mass amount of blood force trauma straight to the skull is, is not ideal. Uh, I, I did want to highlight, though, I know know a couple of guys who went to this event, and they happened to see, you know, exactly what was going on during these Jake right. Gyllenhaal filming right. sessions. And I, I had to ask, I was like, how many takes did they end up doing for this? Because I think there was one really viral clip going around of a singular take that I feel like yeah. there were six different angles of it. And so yeah. there was a second where I was under the impression that Jake Gyllenhaal is just that good of an actor. And they just had to one take it. They got the shot. I asked, I asked my, my friend though, he said that was not the case. They, they did that uh, like five times. And it's- They do the whole, like the whole from start to end, like the whole announcing, So like, I was asking everything. like the takes that they had to get so fraud alert, this movie's not going to be good according to the fire department. Well, maybe that also just might be Jake Gyllenhaal promoting his movie Ambulance that came out last year that was a dumpster fire. Also I, is a possibility. I, I cannot say, I don't know if you're messing with I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm dead serious. Ambulance. That I'm doesn't dead sound serious. Great. I'm dead serious. Yeah, sorry, Jake. But I was asking, they told me they had the start of the match they had their like little starting like little scram but the main shots they had to get was like jake gyllenhaal backed up on the cage getting punched and then like fighting back and then doing the flying knee and he was saying they did the cage thing flying knee like five times over and they're like i watched that get it jake you fucked that one up gotta do that again (laughs) sorry (laughs) i watched that flying knee a couple times though like that was pretty it was pretty good I also, they weren't there for the weigh-ins, but I know that they did multiple clips filming in the weigh-ins. There was one specific viral clip going that went on. Yeah. But I saw another clip and like, you can just tell Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal butchered the living shit out of that take. It was like, uh, you fucked up that line, bro. You gotta, you gotta do that shit. That wasn't good. Uh, but it's just interesting. I do think, though, like, it, like my favorite part of all that was watching Dana White, like, do the fake uh, pre-fight like so. stare down, like, breaking, yeah. breaking up their fight. I could tell, yeah. I could see it in Dana White's eyes that that was, like, the sixth take when they finally got it. And you could it's just so done. a little tired of the acting, like, breaking up, like, oh, my God, fucking again. All right. Like, that's what it looked like to me. But I, I want to say, though, I didn't watch the Creed 3 movie over the weekend, but everyone fighting movies are they're in, are right, in now. right now. They're in so, right now. This Roadhouse movie, I'm not sure when it's coming out. I, I think it said sometime this year, but yeah, I'm going to be deeply looking into their opening UFC scenes, and I'll be remembering yes. that Jake Gyllenhaal filmed this like 17 times. Uh, it'll kind of scar that uh, for me. 
but also what great advertising for this for real film. i never for heard real. about this movie i had no Zero idea Jake, clue was happening. paul was trying to get back into southpaw type shit i had no idea uh but I mean, that's jake, the jake greatest gyllenhaal, advertising. not jake paul oh yeah not jake, but, paul. Uh, jake gyllenhaal back oh yeah wait that was two weekends ago jake paul also jake paul was two weeks ago that. yes yeah but but yeah that's that's about all the ufc talk you guys are going to get now it's time to the the real stuff uh now Every, I think we got to start with the combine. A lot of I know, news. I know the free agency trade news and everything is nuts, but I think we just right. got to start with what happened so, over the weekend. Let me let me just preface all of this. All right, a lot of people might be expecting uh, an immediate breakdown of of all of this information. The combine ended. And you know, yesterday. I know all of you Michigan fans out there really want to hear my comments on CJ Stroud's uh, interview uh answer so we'll dive into that we'll dive into that one too uh but we we're gonna break down the combine but we're not we don't have the rankings set up yet we don't have the draft stuff set up yet we're still processing that information our unnamed intern has been locked in the janitor's closet once again uh so we'll have it all set up by the end of the weekend yeah uh but real quick, before I before I really dive into the CJ Stroud uh, remarks, I, I just wanted to say real quick that I'm just looking around at this draft board. The Bears are going to be trading down. I'm not sold on – a lot of people are saying, like, oh, Houston will just trade up. I kind of think if I'm Houston, you're I'm better st- I just stay right there. Staying put with 2-12. and 12. Because guess what? Whoever is. whoever's gonna be at one, whoever's gonna be at one. Sorry, I know I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah. But whoever's gonna be at one, they're gonna most likely take one of four quarterbacks. If you're if you're Houston and you want a quarterback, I am completely fine with any of the other three that are gonna be. And also, we went over this earlier, but we are kind of thinking. I mean, Texans, even if they kill it, get their quarterback and wide receiver, which I'm about to point out. They're still probably getting four wins next year at most. So you might as well just go defense, tank That's again, and go get Caleb next yeah. year. Or Drake May if 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 you don't get the one pick. Yeah, Drake I May mean, is gonna shit. be pretty good we'll too. See. Oh, okay. I feel you know what? I also I I, I I'm hoping that Caleb this doesn't... is the runaway number one pick for next and year. And Michael Pratt's number two. Michael Pratt is number two, but my question is who will be the Will Levis? that jumps in who will be the AR 15 because right now Drake may is getting that preseason love. I think he's in that talk, but I know there's going to be some random ass quarterback, from Sam Hartman, North Dakota tech, Sam Hartman. I'd say he's notable enough where I'd say that that's the case. I'd I'm see talking Sam just Hartman a doing random, that. Like a Zach Wilson out of nowhere. Like I uh, will Levis. We, we know uh, about, and also I, I feel like Sam Hartman kind of got that. I kind of got that. We highlight a will Levis segment that we talked about before the football season began of how it's quite simple. This is the, really the only reason right, why no, I just, just genu- being, being he puts genuinely mayonnaise and coffee. That can't be your franchise quarterback. No. What the fuck are we talking about? No. no, no. So that alone cross him off the list. No, <laughs> look, I, I being, being genuinely honest. <clears throat> if you want somebody to come out of nowhere and just somehow be a first round pick, I do legitimately think that, Michael Pratt, our quarterback, has a shot. Um, well, we went over this. Quarterback's about heart and hustle, and Michael Pratt exhibits that on every single the water play, boy. Every down, I mean, he second. is he is the the lefty reigning Dick lefty Dick Strong quarterback of the year. Uh, so. but back to my original point: if you want to assemble the God Squad Texans, okay, if you want to if you want to say screw it, let's try to let's try to get this O going. Draft CJ at two and JSN at twelve. Partner up your boys together. Get them going. That's the strategy. Look, I, I also just just a note by the way, talking about these these first this first little bit of of these picks. Uh, this is from the Athletic. I think you know what the Athletic is, right? It's yes. a very yes. notable yes. Uh, sports kind of like article. Yes, yes, I think right. I think most people know. So, I'm <laughs> prefacing that, all right? They said that according to the GMs and execs at the combine. Jalen Carter is not going to be picked in the top 10 picks of the draft. I think that's right now, nuts, the, but the consensus yeah. is Jalen Carter is not going 10. I swear to God, if the Eagles fucking pick him, 
Oh, yeah, because they have 10. I forgot about that. Yeah. If you somehow let the Eagles get Jalen Carter. Dude, I, I don't. I, Jalen I don't need Carter. I'm, they have that other big guy from Georgia. Jordan Davis. They're be, just a seven. Very I mean, it's not. It's not well, going to be fun. Well, no, not fun for not you. from not for uh, me. No, I no. think it'd be very entertaining to watch, but um, I don't quite have that beef with the Eagles. Like you. I also, I've also seen reports that Bryce Young may not be the first quarterback off the board this year. I, Will I don't Levis know. has been sneaking up there. I don't know which quarterback it's going to be. I think I'm going to be honest. After I don't care about combine performances at the end of the day, but. CJ Stroud just proved he was the best thrower at the combine. I so, just like my thing is if you if you ask me it. if you so, asked me like two months ago, I would obviously say Bryce Young is gonna be the number one overall pick, obviously not knowing that the Bears had the first overall pick. But if I'm looking at it now, like that at least Bryce Young would be at least the first quarterback off the board. But looking at it now, I really don't know what's gonna happen. Somebody might take Anthony Richardson just because of the way that he did like what his intangibles are. So, I mean, we're really just going to have to wait and see. By the way, a I lot really, of people really are... I hope that Anthony Richard, uh, Richards, Richardson, holy fuck. I really hope he goes one just because I want to see all that pressure on him. So, just just, just another him. note, by the way, like, people have been comparing uh, Anthony Richardson to, to, like, better than Cam Newton's combine and everything else. Anthony Richardson had almost identical combine numbers to Joe Webb. Do you know who Joe Webb is? You know who Joe yeah. Webb was? Uh, he was a Vikings quarterback, a uh, backup quarterback, started two games in place of Christian Ponder. He lost both those games in the playoffs. That's respect. all I needed to know. Uh, he, he, was was con- he was then Joe Webb. He was then converted. He was then converted into a wide receiver. And also, also interestingly, Anthony Richardson Similar numbers to Christian Ponder. Tough. Interesting. Interesting. Actually, no, uh, that might have been that might have been a Josh Allen had similar numbers to Christian Ponder, which doesn't help his situation either. But yeah, I'm just you know looking around. I am looking at an updated we love them PFF mock board ranking, and you know I'm impressed. That there we they go. Actually Hold moved on. Jackson the, Smith. In they're the saying that PFF's off. ratings are. Cap, you hear the sirens go off. Yeah, no, they're, they're, I mean, the fire department's really, really good at their timing when they call it bullshit that that we talked about on this podcast. But AR-15, Cedar Stroud, Will Levis, Bryce Young, I I kind of am assuming that Will Levis will go ahead uh, ahead of CJ. I'm just going to go on a limb and assume that's going to happen. Even though... If you, if you watch Will Levis in game, oh my God, I don't care if you throw the ball 59 miles an hour. He's throwing it 59 miles an hour directly to the corner. Like, it, it, I don't care how hard you throw. He throws it directly to the defense. Who the fuck cares? Uh, it's, all, it's all right, though. It's all right, though. It's okay. Um, Ohio State quarterback sucks. CJ Stroud should probably be like a seventh round pick. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's just say, starting, starting on CJ Stroud, though, uh, CJ Stroud had some interesting comment, comments during uh, one of his interviews this past week. Yeah, no, he was the worst possible two quarterbacks, literally of all time, that you could have mentioned. Now, first, so let's, first I want to say Michael Vick kind of gets. Hold on, let's let's preface let's let's preface this real quick. The, the question pass. the question was who like what quarterbacks he looks up to in the NFL. Yeah, in general. looks up to looks up to. Okay, think of, yeah, that he, was the question that was asked. Looks up. To that him. was the question that was asked. Now continue. Yeah. So after asked, which quarterbacks do you look up to, and we can leave that up to the listener to decide whether that meant on the field, off the field, Both. whatever. Uh, but the first guy listed was Michael Vick. And you know what? I think it gets a slight pass. I feel like people our age, you know, it's kind of weird that CJ is only like a year. Well, your age is only a year. It's my age, age, yeah. So that's just also weird to process in in of itself. But the Michael Vick one, it's like, uh, okay. Fine, you get a little bit of a pass. All Not right. great, but you know what? You know what? It's, it's, right. it's been a bit. Yeah, it's been a bit. He 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 also had a, a nice pass because he's like, I wear seven for Michael Vick. It's like, okay. But to then follow that up with Deshaun Watson. 
his his Eek. agent right now is just like siege siege what the f- what are you who, doing who do you think had a worse time right now john morant's agent or cj stroud's agent right after that well we we know the answer to that one but cj's agent is just sitting there just like dude wow like i know houston's not a great landing spot but you didn't need to tank your stock that, <laughs> that bad, much man. like we're not trying to drop out of the top 10 now. Like uh, it's just, I don't know what was really going through his head when he picked those two. I mean, thank God he said burrow last and not some, Oh, he did say burrow. He just, he said burrow last. Uh, Okay. So like, at least he had that, but you know, there's that you could have, you know, you could have just gone the really safe route. Say Justin Fields, the guy you sat behind your freshman year. You could say him. Maybe Tom Brady. Maybe that guy, Tom Brady. And then maybe maybe Peyton. And then you could say Michael Vick again. Like that's fine. That's fine. It's, it's fine. just leading with Michael Vick and Deshaun Watson. It's like, ooh. Outside of Those everything the else, by the guys way, he thought of. Outside of <laughs> outside of everything else off the field, too. Like obviously that's an issue. CJ Strauss just not the most mobile guy in the world. So well, this looking- is the thing. I'd say actually it's pretty mobile. Okay. And I think but he's not like, he's not it. like, he's the just not the is, same Ohio play State, style. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't ask him to be mobile. They didn't ask him to move around. And then the Georgia game kind of pains me to see what could have been for, for the whole year. So did he, did he happened. run the 40? Did he run the 40? I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't remember him running. I don't know, but if I was, uh, but, if I was CJ Stroud and you run that forty and you run a four six, every Ohio State fan's coming for your neck. Like, what the hell? Why did you not run more? So, uh, one, one other just him, interesting, very, one other very interesting note that I had. So I, I, I don't really know. I think it's Kalija. Is it Kalija? Uh, Give me the last. Cansey. Uh, Cansey. Kalija Cansey. Not entirely uh, sure. Defensive. Defense attack a lot of pit. All right. Yeah, that's He's a defense attack a lot of pit. That. He's a defense attack a lot of pit. All right. Projected first round pick. Oh, so Aaron this Donald. is just <laughs> yes, but it gets crazy. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It gets crazier than that, though. These are the comparisons oh, between God. Aaron Donald and Kalaja Kansi coming out of the combine. Oh, this is this both, is gonna be a lot to live up to, but all right. Both six feet flat. Aaron Donald's 285 pounds. Kalaja Kansi is 280 pounds. The 40 yard dashes. Aaron Donald, 4.68. Kalaja Kansi, 4.67. Oh, yeah. He, he said and the, the 10 yards. That was him. Yeah. The 10, the 10 yard splits. Aaron Donald, 1.63. And Kalaja Kansi, 1.64. So, intangibly, athletically, their numbers are literally identical. You just got to pray that he also partakes in the Aaron yes. Donald offseason training program because that's <laughs> you know when he's training with yeah knife knife knife, knife shit, training like, yeah you know knife, what? knife training like I can understand why he's the best defensive player on the planet uh, <laughs> just based off the, the measures though looking at this dude how athletic he actually is it's it's like a little terrifying not it's lie. nuts it's a little crazy uh, it's a little crazy. I also just want to say, as a guy who a couple of weeks ago was like, "Hey, maybe we can get Nolan Smith at twenty-one for the Chargers." That ship has sailed. Uh, I know I was talking about. I don't care about the forty, but if you're an edge and you run a sub four-four, oh, you are. Yeah, you're not falling to on. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> he won't. No, he's not a Charger. I've crossed him off the wish list. You most I'm likely could get a wide receiver anymore. Still though. You can still get a wide receiver, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I also do think that some of those wide receiver performances at the Combine kind of fluctuated. Might have helped, you, might have helped you out I, a little I, bit. I think at the end of the day, like, I was shocked to see Jordan Addison running the 4-5. So, like, it, interestingly, this is, is this is just a genuine – this is just a general question that I had. So, <laughs> the Vikings yeah. wide receiver what, coach – What the, the hell Vikings, that? The Vikings <laughs> – I just thought that you were going to continue your point. I, no, I, no, no. I, I you had so, – uh, I, I was I was just going to say, like, Jackson Smith probably has a similar, maybe slower time than Jordan Addison, but it's like one of them gets open on tape and the other doesn't. So, like, who cares? Fair point. Fair point. 40 times. Um, Can you get open? Yeah, so so <laughs> Keenan, Keenan McCardle, uh, the wide receiver coach for the Vikings was the coach doing the wide receiver drills. So getting very up close and getting, getting eyes on. Reminded me of something, but keep going. 
getting eyes on, on uh, all the wide receivers. So my question is, if you are a team that has a coach that's able to be like the coach for the drills and combine, do you have an advantage? Like for, for the Vikings like having their degree, but having have a disadvantage because you're so focused on like, I feel like some of those guys might saying, just be like, okay, I just can't fuck up this drill. Like, but but this is this is my question. My question more so is like, this is the Vikings wide receiver coach. Outside of that has no impact on the draft itself. He's not a scout. I he's also, not the head coach. I have he's no not the GM. How much input position coaches have? Like there are some, but NFL like if, head if, coaches if that I'm, don't have input into the draft. But like what I'm saying, what if I'm but, saying, like I I know I I know that that uh, Kevin O'Connell's has input on the draft. So if if I'm Kevin O'Connell and I want to draft a wide receiver, I'm gonna ask the best wide receiver coach in the league what his opinions are on the wide receivers that he watched at the combine. So does that give you a baseline advantage when like, cause you're so up close, you're watching every little in- intricacy of how they split. Like it's not just film related. It's not like you're using binoculars to watch them. Like this is, this is your coach that's on the field. I, I feel like it depends. Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe it works. I also feel like a lot of it depends on GM coaching staff relationship. I think, Probably. Hey, these just came out of your wards. The best wide receiver coach in the NFL and by nature, the best wide receiver coach in the world for the Vikings. Now I'd say this guy should, should probably have some input on, on potential draft fees at the wide receiver position. I'd, I don't know if that's the case though. I mean, like, I think they should, but I don't know if it's true. Like, I, don't know. I think that makes I just sense, thought that it was I just I thought know. that it was I just I thought know. that it was interesting that if you have coaches that are on the field talking to players, watching the players, like if that might give you an innate advantage if you end up drafting one of those kids at the position because you've seen them up close rather than just over film or interviews or binoculars or something. Well, I think maybe to a degree, but also like keep in mind that all these pro days, all the all the coaches are there too, and they get to get up close then also. I, I'm not sure true, how much true. it, it true. really affects it. I was true. What you did remind me of, though, when you were bringing up uh, Vikings wide receiver coach on the field. So uh, the Chargers, uh, I'm not sure if it was a quarterback coach. I, I honestly think it might have just been like an assistant. But there was a period where they had to have somebody start throwing. And this oh, the balls, yeah. This assistant has a fucking strap, okay? This guy was just throwing bombs. I was like, wait a second. Maybe, maybe Justin can learn a thing or two out from this guy. I... I was just looking at this. I was like, shit, could he be our backup? Like, I might take that over Chase Daniel. I don't know. Uh, Chase Daniel's a free agent. I do think, though, while, while we're on the topic of, you know, coaching staffs, training staffs, I think this is a nice segue into the recent. Uh, we'll we talk more about the draft this. on Thursday's episode, just, we, we just, just so you guys know. We just missed it last week, recorded a day early, but got leaked. Of course, like last Wednesday. The NFL facilities, training staff, coaching staff reviews, strength staff reviews. So the NFLPA like team ratings, basically. Yeah, yeah like team rankings, rating facilities, staff, uh, members, yeah. yada yada. Um, so organizational ratings. You know, but before we get into the the breakdown of how the Chargers and Vikings are not the same franchise, let's just start off. You know, let's just have fun together. And just clown the commanders yeah. for coming in dead last and having <laughs> multiple F minuses F- on their report card. Now I didn't even know that was possible. F F minus, that's an F is an F, okay? An F minus, you're really sending a message like this was legitimately unacceptable. Horrendous. Like actually <laughs> unbearable to deal with. Uh and I think a, that means like the health inspection committee would shut them down yeah i i guess i i i don't know that Probably. exact detail but i sounds like it but the commander i feel like you you really have to try to fail at fail like fail failing like they they basically failed so hard that so, they went below yeah. failure yeah i have it right here so they came in dead last for treatment of facilities training room locker room and team travel and they came second to last for training staff however though they ranked first for strength coaches so there's somebody in washington really? doing something right uh, that 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 d line that d line is really 
putting in the work there. Yeah, I do think it's very interesting, though. The team travel 32, this is what stuck out to me. I think the commanders are the only NFL team that do not offer first class uh, seats to any of their players. Only team in the they, NFL. They don't. What? No first class for any of their players. Only team in the NFL. I guess everybody's on the same playing field then. I mean, sure. I just think that's hilarious. I, I, I would at least give it to maybe like the captains of your team, but okay. Now maybe this, teams with families. This is the thing. Now Washington, they they ranked last overall, obviously. If you came in last for four of the eight categories, the Chargers came in second last place in 30th place. Um, but you know, the commanders, they they were at least first in, in strength room. Chargers um ranked in the bottom bottom half of the league in every single category so everett uh we were 27th in the treatment of facilities but i think that gets a slight pass because the team facility was being renovated last year uh which i mean of course the practice facility is getting renovated and that takes the whole year it's like i don't know maybe we could have done this in march uh summer whatever maybe the off season whatever uh so that slight pass, uh, 29th for food service and nutrition, though. What the hell? I mean, that that's just that's just being. I'm, I guarantee uh, you, <laughs> uh, your team is in Los Angeles. I guarantee you, you can find a very good dietitian. Yeah, and real quick segue. I heard the Bengals, which I'm pretty sure ranked lower than the Chargers for food service and nutrition. Apparently, their food service was so bad that. If it was in like an off day and they were coming in uh, to the practice facility for like a quick individual workout, like let's say Joe Burrow was like, all right, T and Jamar, let's go throw. If they were to show up that day and there wasn't official team practice, the entire cafeteria food facility would be completely shut. If they wanted to get a banana, they couldn't do it. If they want to get a bottle of water, be closed. So that's just hilarious to be treating. Well, in comparison for for the Cardinals, (laughs) For the Cardinals, uh, if you wanted a to-go box, you had to pay for it. Oh no, that's just degrading. <laughs> so, so yeah, can you uh, whip out your um your quick little student ID swipe card for me. Thanks, Kyler. Yeah, we'll throw in a juice box too. Uh, it's just <laughs> it's just not a great it's not a great not a great look. No, not a great look. Uh, not a great look. But real quick, finishing up with uh Chargers. Um, but sorry, Time sorry, just one last, last thing with, with, with training room. And 30th for training staff. And these two were both, or head, head training staff was recently just fired. Uh, well, yeah. Um, puncturing the lung of your starting quarterback probably doesn't go very far towards your credibility. And also, correct me if I'm wrong here, Everett, but before a trade is in place, it is the, the team where that player is potentially getting traded to. It is up to that training staff to determine if that player passed the physical and is fit to play, yes. correct? So, yes. well, the trainers clearly didn't see J.C. Jackson's extra bone in his ankle, so they clearly failed in that um, physical. Capacity. So, there's been a lot of failures. I feel like Derwin James is hurt six games a year at minimum. I, I feel, you know, Justin Herbert broke his Somehow Justin through. Herbert. And also has, tore has, his shoulder at alive. the end of the week. Or end of the year. Which still... I don't know when that happened, but yeah, he had shoulder surgery recently. So I think we're going to find some answers about training staffs. And now, holy shit, I'm really on it today. The Ravens training staff, they came in last place. And apparently a couple, couple years ago or a year ago when Matthew Judon was leaving the Ravens, he was going out around and telling the other free agents, do not go to Baltimore. They don't care about your health do not go to Baltimore. Baltimore, as you know, and as I know, as a former Gus Edwards owner, they have quite quite a history of really bad injuries. And there was a former player on the ACLs, Ravens. anybody? Yeah, there was a former player on the Ravens who said, like, two or three months out of surgery, they were making him do, like, single leg presses and stuff, which I'm no medical expert, but was not not good for the health of his knee and that player to this day still feels like blindsided by the Ravens organization so you know Lamar is having some friction there they have a lot of injuries every year I kind of feel like Ravens long term you got to fix this scenario and really it's the Matthew Judon going around telling other players 
anyone who's played for the Ravens is now going to tell all their friends in free agency, do not go there. They're not going to look out for you. Don't my play. my favorite my favorite clip from all of this coming out was the the Cardinals GM or Cardinals owner. Uh, when when everything got published, they had a press conference about it, and the Cardinals Cardinals owner goes, "No, no, no, no. like those are all lies. Like that's not true. Like at all. Like we do all of this stuff. Like trust me." And I'm just sitting here, I'm like, "Are you shitting me? Like if I'm a player and I see now my all the owner players doing and they're that, like, oh, so oh, they they don't." So they really don't <laughs> they, care. They, they care. really but, don't care. Okay, now to the fun part. So I I, I ranked thirtieth, uh, Everett. You ranked first. Yeah. Like kind of with ease. I'll pull up the exact the exact statistics right now, but you were first in four categories, and you finished top five in every other category. My question is, Everett, how the fuck did you guys lose first round of the playoffs then? Uh, the defense was ranked 30th. That comes true. down to Ed Donatel. True, true. Yeah. Now, fortunately, they did not have a specific ranking of just coaching staff because I'm not sure how highly the Vikings yeah. would have ranked. The defensive staff, not good. Offensive staff, pretty good. We could break it up into offensive and defensive. You definitely would have been bottom three in the league for defensive, but I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you actually have some good hearted players who wouldn't have called out the coaching staff, even though they had the a hundred percent were in the right to do that. Yeah. I I'm just looking at the stuff. My headphones just popped out. I can't hear you, but you can hear me. I, I didn't say anything. The, the Vikings. That's just how you run an org. That's, that's how you do it. People, that's, people were talking. People are talking Shout about out. people. Yeah, no, people are talking about how, like, for free agency, for getting players, like, you want to go to a winning organization. You want to do this. You want to do that. You want to get paid, right? Those are factors, but having facilities that are really nice, like everybody since the Vikings opened up this new facility at TCO and in, in, um, I don't where 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 it's not in Eden Prairie, uh. They, they 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 open up this new facility and obviously the staff has changed and they brought in great staff the staff is better now than it was under zimmer but it was still good under zimmer everybody has always raved about how great the facilities are for minnesota and that that is the biggest attraction for people wanting to go to minnesota because you don't come for the weather obviously uh what so are you talking about <laughs> i know uh well, the weather's um, probably better there than it is in la so Maybe right now. Maybe right now. I don't. I don't really think so. Uh, but I'll be honest, I, though, in the just summer, that's... Minnesota might be top three. It is. It is so Minnesota summer. clinically underrated. It's great. Clinically underrated. It yeah. is beautiful. And as a person who's only there in the summer, I I can really attest to that. So it is beautiful. I don't know. It what is it's beautiful. Like in the winter. Uh, cold. Cold as shit. Um, I'll but never try it, so. facilities make a much larger impact than previously thought and i think that these nflpa rankings really will influence things this offseason that you wouldn't think they would i think it'll just really influence free agency like let's say there's a guy you're picking between six teams all same contract that's gonna heavily weigh into it okay well like where no i i think money's so not the determining factor anymore maybe you're guaranteed starting spots in multiple places playing time's not an issue and it just comes down to just the organizations itself and, and how they the, treat the great players. thing the great and thing for the up. vikings in this situation too by the way first year under a head coach you go 13 and 3 with, with the 31st ranked defense in the nfl right you go and you get the best ranking out of every team on, in the nfl for for just facilities for being an organization you have trying to get younger and trying to get these big name free agents. That looks great for Minnesota for free agency, for the future of the team. Like that is a great place to be. I do think, yeah, no, this is going to give you guys a leg up come free agency time. I do think this is, you know, that's the little asterisk factor. It gives a little edge to certain teams over others. I was also, I feel like in general, I was kind of, kind of surprised because I feel, near the top it was a majority of nfc north teams and i i just saw a lot of nfc oh yeah packers, packers six, around there. giants eight cowboys five there's afc 
AFC two through four, Miami at two. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. They also ranked their training. Vests. Yeah, the uh, the training uh, the tr- the training staff also apparently has is is very good on contrary to to what we have seen this year. And shout out to the Raiders, even though Mark Davis is like one of the like least wealthy owners in the league. I mean, well, also this could be due to just moving to Allegiant. That could also be a big yeah, factor. Just that moving facilities probably would be it. But well, well. <laughs> I'll give a quite their number one for strength coaches team team travel. That's just that's just curious up to do you like your yeah. players or not? Like just out of curiosity, how are the facilities rated between the Rams and the Chargers? Because obviously they so both it's are different. It's different situation. practice facilities. Uh, okay, I I'm I'm interested. Let let me see. Let me see. Actually, uh, Rams Rams are low on this list. I know that's why I'm curious uh, because obviously they're both playing in a brand new stadium. People so like that Rams, stadium aside from the rain coming into it. Rams are 24th in treatment of facilities, 22nd food service nutrition, 25th weight room, 24th training room, 25th locker room. Okay, so Rams are really? 25th locker Whoa. room. That means Chargers should be 25th locker room. Like they have the same locker rooms. Just buy that. I'm mean, a quick check. Okay, is it 25th? I don't think they actually do have the same locker rooms. No, Chargers are... 28. So the Chargers locker room is just shittier than the Rams. Nice. How, nice. I don't understand how how, <laughs> how could your locker room be bad? You just built one of the nicest stadiums in the NFL. And also, how is it bad? Well, also, like I I've seen like quick little Chargers clips of their locker room, and it looks it looks very nice. Maybe it's they're complaining about like <laughs> running water problems like maybe they don't have room out speaking their speaking of like locker room problems by the way apparently there was a rat infestation in the oh. jaguars locker room no that was that was just a big one and on, honestly like i'm not gonna point figure fingers or anything but part of me thinks urban meyer's like let's get rats in the locker room fuck these guys we need rats in here and I, I that. that's a good clip. And I think that that's Doug Peterson clip. saw it and was like, you know what? You know, Herb, you might not have had the greatest ideas here, but this thing you got right. The that's rats one in of the them. locker room, you got that <laughs> one right. right. We're gonna keep that. Look how Trevor played down the stretch. ETN, ETN so was juking out. My the question rats. is that was his warm-up before the games. He was if there were rats in the home, if there was rats in the home locker room, does that mean there were rats in the away locker room? And if you're the other team, you pull up to the away locker room and you see rats in there, are you a little you little well, rattled? We just going highlighted how it's an advantage to have rats in the locker room. For, so if I was the for Jaguars, the Jaguars I, wouldn't, when, I wouldn't want rats to be in there. But the for, for the Jaguars, they're one with the rats. The other team they where they're the not expecting they're the, the rats. of the rats. Yeah. When they're not expecting the rats to be there, and you pull up, and there's just rats roaming free, are you a little off your game? Like you pulling up, like you know, you're a little rattled now. I mean, definitely things can change. There definitely, definitely emotions could be flying around high if you if you see a little rodent yeah. at, at your feet uh, when you know you're, you're throwing on your around. cleats. You know, you're cry, trying to grab a shoehorn. It's like, oh, it's a rat. Uh, that might throw you <laughs> off your game. Not gonna lie. Uh, you know, it is. It is not. Uh, it is not Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to clarify. Oh yeah, so. but it's just you know uh, these team rankings very interesting to highlight. I uh, want to shout out shout out the Vikings and let's call. Yeah, I I'm uh, happy I'm Spanos. happy that that's the way that worked out. Spanos, uh, um, what the what, what are you doing? What are what's what's going on, guys? Yeah, so a lot of a lot of stuff has happened today, uh, in the NFL. Yeah, we can we can rip this down. I very right before we started recording, Geno Smith. Resigning with the Seahawks extension three years, 105 million. Now, I, yeah. I, I think you know that, like, if I'm the Giants, a three year, 100 ish to Daniel Jones, fine. It's just like, fine, Geno Smith, you know, he, he's not gonna be out here demanding 200 million. All right, I think just so right now, temporary Seahawks. I love Gino on the Seahawks. Okay. You know my opinion about Seattle. You know how I hate Pete Carroll for picking Russ over the Legion of Boom and how that went out. But Pete, I stand by Pete going with Gino Smith. I stand by Pete. I'm with it. Yeah. I I just like we said, there's a lot going on today. We saw that uh DeAndre Hopkins most likely is gonna be traded. 
Cardinals are going to cut Rodney Harrison and uh, Robbie Anderson. Uh, Frank Chosen Clark's Anderson. getting cut. Chosen Anderson. Chosen Anderson. Sorry. Uh, Frank Clark is going to get released. Orlando Brown is not getting franchise tagged. Um, what else? Eric Kendricks of the Vikings got released today. We don't know I where Lamar is going. Called, still, <laughs> like, I call. I called that one. By the way, I called. I I literally tweeted out yesterday. I said I have a feeling that something's about to happen, and Eric Kendricks, Adam Thielen, and uh, Jordan Hicks are not going to be with this team much longer. First oh, I pillars you just already tweeted fun. out. I have a feeling something's going to happen. I'm like, I think we're all we all feel something's going to happen a lot of the time. No, let's see. Let's see what it. Let's see. Let's let's see. <laughs> Let's see what I said specifically. I said, I said, by the looks of things right now, Adam Thielen, Eric Cook, Eric, Eric Kendricks, and Dalvin Cook will be, all be on new teams sooner than later. I said that yesterday. Eric Kendricks has already been released. Yeah, there there have been a lot of moves, uh, been a lot of cuts. A lot of and uh, the most surprising thing of today. Yeah, let's get into it. Derek Henry is being shopped around oh, to multiple was, teams. I was, I was saying Derek Carr getting $150 million. His agent deserves the Oh, yes, world. that also happened. His agent deserves <laughs> the world for that. We need to put him in the Hall of Fame, okay? He deserves to be in Canton for that. I, I just want to say with the, the Saints. $100 the Saints million are just fully so... guaranteed, Everett. Does he, have Dar- Does he have Kirk Cousins' agent? Let me look that up. Keep going, though. Uh, let me <laughs> you might need fact. I just the Saints are so delirious. They don't know when they need to rebuild and when they need to compete. The Saints with the with the division that the NFC South is about to be, it wouldn't matter if they had Andy Dalton as their starting quarterback or Derek Carr because they're still going to be able to beat those teams if they're they're competitive in other aspects. But but by giving Derek oh, Carr all of that money up next year. Brady's By out. giving Derek Carr all of that money, you're, you're not going to be able to sign other people you need to sign or re-sign people that you're going to need to re-sign. And that's a three-year deal. Like, four. I, I don't understand four-year four. deal. Like, that money that, that money is going to stay on the cap space for all that time. You're not going to be able to rebuild your team to what you need to, especially if you keep trading these draft picks away to get other players. I know you don't have a first-round pick this year, but you want to fix that offense. We saw how terrible it was this past year, quarterback aside. Defense, same deal. I and just, also, I don't, don't understand what's that. going on with like Camara and stuff. Like, yeah, I, they got question marks. Michael Thomas, are they moving on or are they staying? There's a lot of, a lot of moving pieces. They got a lot of older guys on defense. I just, where their, their, their team is, their today. team is very old. Their team is very old. Yeah. The, and that core has been there forever. Like since and the Rams they obviously, NFC championship game. They, they made a push down the stretch, but. That team's only going to get older, and you have a, a quarterback who's now aging on a guaranteed contract for four years. I know something about guaranteed contracts, by the way. And let's hope they don't restructure that one down the line. Terrible <laughs> draft capital right now. Like, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Your conference, your division is is terrible right now. Why not scrape it down to the bone and rebuild? Because you're still going to be able to compete no matter how bad you are. Every team in that con in that division is terrible. Yes. Yeah, really softening up with Brady leaving like shit. Kyle Trask might be their quarterback Panthers. Who is their quarterback? Uh, Matt Corral right now. Yeah. Corral. Uh, so Who's, who deserves a chance, by the way, deserves a chance. Matt Corral deserves a chance. He's going, not going to lie. Desmond Ritter is the starting quarterback for the Falcons. Oh yeah. I, I just blanked on the Falcons, but they're so irrelevant that uh, it was okay for me to just completely forget. So them I, I just, every, if it's such a weak division. I don't know why you just wouldn't want to rebuild now. Yeah, all right. The other, the other thing that we were talking about, let's go through this landing spots for Derek Carr, not for Derek Carr, potential Derek landing Henry. spots for Derek Henry. So, yes. Potential okay. landing yeah. spots for Derek Henry. Derek Henry on the trade block, Tennessee. I, I guess we could say what's going on in Tennessee, but we know what's going on in Tennessee. It's a fire sale. They're, they're resetting. They're resetting the clock right now. Uh, Cut and Taylor Lewan, Bud Dupree just got cut. Shit, they, they might as well like trade Tannehill or cut him. I'm not sure how the cap space works. Cut him, there. probably. But I, like, I guess. You, you might as well just go full on, go back to the 2013 Titans when them and the Chiefs were the worst two teams in the league. Like, just turn back the clock. Maybe this is Brable being like, hey, Maybe if Ryan Day loses to Michigan one more time, I could take over at Ohio State. I don't know. We'll see what Vrabel's deciding. We'll see what he wants to do. Uh, 
but here are the landing spots. I kind of thought we're, we're kind of fun. Now, some of these, uh, like a lot of the teams I'm about to list, it's not really realistic that these could happen based on their cap space. And I'm not really sure. What do you, what would you say the, the trade hall for Derek Henry would be? Or what do you think the picks would be? Third round pick. Maybe a second. I, I feel Christian like- McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey was only worth a second round pick. So I Derek would also Henry, say Christian McCaffrey is more valuable than Derrick Henry. That's what I'm saying. Derrick Henry is an older back. Obviously, he's a great running back. He's a great power back. But there's only a select amount of teams that want a, a running back that they're going to run into the dirt like that. And that's going to have to be the their offense is going to be a run first offense, which obviously is not really the way the NFL is going. So an older running back on a big contract that's going to need to be the focal point of your offense. There's going to be a limited market for him. And on top of that, because he's older, I think he's going to get left less, less capital for that. So teams that I could see doing it, the Ravens. Oh, I got my list. Eagles. Oh, I got my list. Right. So you got your list. Okay. first things first, I think a very interesting team that could lay out with Derrick Henry, the Buffalo bills, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Derrick Henry, let's bring power back to Buffalo, sign me up as a spectator, as a viewer. I would love to see a Josh Allen, Derrick Henry power run game. That sounds very interesting to me. Uh, the Buffalo Bills salary cap room's a little interesting. I think they're 18 under, and Derrick Henry uh, will take up 16 million in cap. Hit. So he's not the cheapest player, not the cheapest contract to take on. So I'm not sure how realistic it is, but Josh Allen and Derrick Henry in a run game together. Yes, sign me up. Next team, the Baltimore Ravens. Franchise tag Lamar, partner him with Derrick Henry. I don't think there's a single person out there other than inner division AFC North rivals who wouldn't want to see that. Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. Yes, sign me up. Who wouldn't want to watch that? that that's literally the greatest thing ever. Now, Derrick. We went over this earlier. Ravens training staff don't don't go there, but as a fan, go there. Next team, Miami Dolphins. It it would be absurd to watch Tyreek Hill, Waddle, Derrick Henry, and that weird lefty Hawaiian guy step on the field together. It would be such an amazing sight to see. And then you got vaping Mike McDaniel on the sideline. It it's a vibe. It's a mood. I'm all for it. Once again, though, their their caps. It's now, they are getting um, Byron Jones off the books. I think. I think he said he's. I think he said he's not retiring. Just he's. Done he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be there. So but he's that's on. My assumption. He's on a fat ass contract, so they can get off of that. Maybe they can make some space. But regardless, just the thought of Tyreek Waddle, Derek Henry, and that weird lefty Hawaiian guy all on the field at the same time would be amazing. Next, this is this is a pure selfish angle okay i don't think this would actually be good for this team that i'm about to list but as a person i'd love to see it the chicago bears uh don't think it'd be smart long term at all Uh uh-uh but justin fields and derrick henry together i just want i just want to know what could happen don't think it'd be great do you just want to watch me suffer ever ever the bears wouldn't be good Oh, I'm not saying that, but I I would have to watch my defense. To watch. My defense would have to play Derrick Henry twice a year, and it just it would hurt my soul to watch Justin Fields and Derrick Henry do that. And it would also hurt my soul if Aaron Rodgers went to the Raiders, but that's not looking too likely, and I don't think him to the Bears is either. So we don't really need to worry about that. Now, this is my last one. Long shot. This is not happening. Okay, it's not happening. But Derrick Henry to the Detroit Lions. Dan Campbell and Derrick Henry seem like a match made in heaven. And I feel like them two just... The mindset, the attitude. You know, we would all run through a brick wall for Dan Campbell. I might run through a brick building for Dan Campbell and Derrick <laughs> Henry. So, long shot. I don't... I, nothing about it makes sense, but the Lions. Derrick Henry... So, how, ma- how many teams do you have there? Uh, five right there. The last two were, none of them are really that realistic, but all just fun. So think about. let's do, let's do a top 10. Let's get another five teams in there. 
and let's bang them out one through 10, like a list, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't think you're going to like the other teams I'm going to throw on there. No. I, yeah, because the next team I'd bring up is Packers, bro. Packers have Aaron Jones on contract. They wouldn't do that. I was hearing, though, they're, they're kind of done with him. No, I, I, I've said to trade him. I've said to trade him, but they're not going to trade out Aaron Jones for another older running back on a big contract. Yeah, that wouldn't That's make just not sense. How it's you know, but this for fun. That doesn't make sense. Aaron, but Aaron what I could see, Kirk Henry. what I could see, by the way, maybe the Falcons, maybe the Bucks. The Falcons, like, maybe could throw, throw it off. Yeah, the Falcons, Bucks. Um, what else? Falcons yeah, could pull wouldn't it do off. it. Now, the thing, like, I was seeing Giants, like, I mean, they could do it. It's just like, they're going to sign Saquon before Saquon? they do that. You know, so I, I didn't, didn't throw them on the list. You did the Eagles? No, I also don't think it's. You I mean, have to do the, you have to put the Eagles on there. But it's, it's just like that. Commanders, Commanders, Cardinals. I actually, Commanders, yes. Commanders, Commanders actually, Car- Cardinals actually would also yes. trade for him if they could. That would be hot. Oh, my God. Oh, it doesn't work. God damn it. I was going to say, let's go beast mode back in Seattle, but they have Kenneth Walker, so they just wouldn't do that. But I'd yeah. love to see Derrick okay. Henry just in a Seattle uniform. <laughs> in a Seattle uniform, that would be lie. great. Just let's have you bang out. Just just list all those teams real quick in order of uh, what, what team you'd want, one through five, one through ten or whatever. Uh, just in your favorite, like, you know, what team you'd most like him to go to, least like him to go to in that list. Uh, okay. Ravens, Lions, Dolphins, Bills, Steelers, Bears. <laughs> I was about to say Niners, which would be really fun to watch, but no, that, that won't happen. Uh, Commanders, well, they can't go Raiders. They just got Josh Jacobs. Mm. Oh, I don't really think there's that. I don't think there's 10 teams that would do this. But Just do five. Sake of this, just do five. I, I did do five. Uh, That's fine. But for, for the sake of this, uh, I, yeah, I think I might not be able to. to I, I just don't think. I don't think that there's ten teams that would want him. Really taking on Derek. I don't think there's ten teams that would want him. Other so than just I, the, I the prospect that. of it being interesting to think about, I'm not sure if I'd really be a fan of that. If I if I were all these, uh, all these um, teams. yeah, I, I I don't think that there's ten people that would want him. On a yes. completely separate note, by last the way, last thing though oh. about free agency, unless you, I mean, there's only one other. This person is still kind of. There's this is still kind of associated free agency. I don't know if this is what Tom you're thinking. Brady. No, Tom Brady, Thomas yeah. Edward Brady, Patrick Brady yes. Jr. Uh, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Uh, Tom Brady unretiring. This man, ball is life. He loves ball too much. I kind of now a couple of weeks ago we said I can't believe. Well, this is more so me. I was saying I can't believe. I think I'm more confident in Tom Brady playing next year than Aaron Rodgers. Now that flipped pretty quickly, but now that we're here, yep. I don't. Could it have possibly flipped back to higher chance that Brady plays next year than Aaron? So uh, first things first with Aaron Rodgers, I have heard one, the Packers do not want him to return. The Packers just want to move on, but they can, obviously can't trade him unless he wants to be traded somewhere. So it's up to Aaron Rodgers, if he wants to be there or not. And I've heard a lot of people saying that Aaron Rodgers is just going to retire, which we both said is if, if Tom Brady's retired, there's no shot Aaron Rodgers retires the same year. No chance. Yeah, but, we know that Aaron Rodgers is a really big egotistical, selfish piece of if shit. Somehow, if, somehow Tom, if somehow Tom Brady unretires, Aaron Rodgers 100% would retire to get oh. the spotlight on him. Oh, yeah. 100%. Over Jeopardy. He'd probably take his spot on the Fox commentating booth too, just like really, probably. really undercut the shit out just, of Brady. Uh, but I, I, just to be perfectly honest, I know there have been reports that people have been like talking about Tom Brady coming back. 
I don't think that those reports have anything to actually do with Tom Brady's telling anybody that it's a possibility. I just think people think that because he came back last year, that he yeah, might come back to again. To my knowledge, he's preparing his first stand-up comedy set right now. So <laughs> I, which so, also side note, I saw some people out there being like, dude, who the hell would pay to watch a Tom Brady stand? I would pay to watch a Tom I Brady I would pay stand-up. to watch Tom Brady stand-up Bro, I, I just need to see him just, now, I think he'd be bombing just doing dad jokes, but I don't know. I see him that close up. That makes go. me think that Tom Brady, you know, everyone's been doubting Brady's whole life. What's what's one thing where you think there's no way Brady could ever do it? Stand up comedy. So what's Brady going to do? Stand up comedy. comedy. I feel like I mean wrong. Tom Brady. Tom Brady has a little has a little comedy in him. Like you see his tweets or his his TikToks. Like they're they're no. Little, I, they're I think he is them. pretty funny. Um. But I, I, I just social media PR team is pretty funny. I just uh, I don't I do not think that Aaron I do not think that Tom Brady is going to come back. I think that there is a sub zero point one percent chance that he does come back. I think there's a higher chance he plays in the NFL than commentates for Fox. Well, he obviously said he's not going to commentate for Fox next year. But in a hypothetical where he didn't say that, I'd put a higher percent chance he plays. I I just speaks about he football. he he uh, has. He's trying to reconcile with Giselle right now and see where that goes. So I just, I don't, I think that if, since that's been the case, there's a 0% chance that he comes back because he's just focusing on family and trying to realize that he fucked up last year. If it also were to somehow happen that he does come back next year, I'm going to once again, take full credit for it. It's kind of interesting that the day after I call out Michigan and Tom Brady for being a bunch of bums and not developing Tom Brady, he decides to flirt around with unretiring. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> not saying I influence notable people's decisions, but I think it's just very interesting that Brady now floats coming back out of retirement just, and then uh, Baycott drops disgusting numbers the day after I mention him by name in the video. So I'm not taking credit, but I'm taking all the credit. So just just yeah. also just also saying uh you know right after I released the commander's wish list, cut Bobby McCain, cut Carson Wentz, the only two players I said to cut. Say profits. I mean, you're kind of on a roll. I mean, we're not going to discuss the pre-made ones that you made for the teams that you're about to go over earlier, but you got those all right, too. I did. What I'm most excited for with you this offseason, I'm really excited for the Everett NFL mock draft. I I want you to get up to version 4.0, okay? I want four updates of that thing. None of them are going to be right right now based off the way this draft's going. Well, if you keep thinking like that, they won't be. Let's turn that frown upside down and get some get it's some. Not, confidence it's, not a, in fr- it's not a frown, man. Oh, I got confidence. I had confidence last year, too. <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, accuracy. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but that's like on a free agency trade news and everything. We'll go over some more. Combine so stuff. I just the one thing the one thing that I'm going to talk about just with the Vikings real quick obviously cutting Eric Kendricks a staple at linebacker for the last six five six years um maybe more I don't really know when he I think he was drafted in 2015 but he's been around for a while so it'll be eight years with him gone the people you have to realize I know this is what I said in the very first thing that I made for the Vikings offseason and I kind of changed it a little bit going into the updated one that I just did and now I would probably make an even more updated one uh but yeah that won't piss Eric off Kendrick- fans if you upload that one before the Chiefs offseason <laughs> <laughs> Eric Kendrick's gone Jordan Hicks is going to be gone Harrison Smith will be gone if he does not restructure Adam Thielen is probably gone CJ Ham's probably gone. There's going to be a complete overhaul of this entire roster. It's going to be much younger. There's going to be a lot of open cap space, and I think it's going to be very good for the future. But people have to accept the fact that a lot of these players that we've seen staples are not going to be on this team next year, and we're going to have to really de- rely on developing players. And I think developing players is the way to go for winning championships. You can't just get everybody for free agency which is kind of what the Vikings have been trying to do. And I think that this new approach is going straight through. 
developing people is going to be very productive. Hopefully if they can develop properly, the bigger thing though, is I'm going to be interested to see what happens with Dalvin cook. Cause right now it's kind of seeming like Dalvin cook is going to be gone, but it also kind of seems to me like he might not be, and he might be valued more than people actually think that he is. I personally am not on the train that running back should be overvalued. I think that they're very replaceable. Uh, I love to see Tajay in, in a Vikings uniform, but we'll wait to see if that happens. Yeah, we'll uh, just go down and record and Tajay Spears is the only running back that deserves a second contract. Right just now? Him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Him. Nobody yeah. else. Just him. Just him. Contract. Just him. Uh, I was going to shout him out earlier, but I, I, I just, we just moved on too fast. But shout out Tajay. And fucking great performance in the combine. <laughs> great fucking performance, dude. So... But yeah, that was my that was my little clip there on the Vikings. But I think it's off season time, Everett. I think I think the yeah, it's off season time. time. Well, we've been going through off season. All right, so uh, if you uh, if you watched the last episode, uh, you would know that I let Grant choose which off seasons I was going to do, and he oh, elected let me guess to. Still. Let me let me guess. We'll, we'll do this. Well, you already, many... what, you, already, oh. you already know what one. You already you already know what both yeah, of them yeah, are. Guess. Yeah, I guess I forgot the other, but yeah, I, uh, I just. Yeah. But I, I I let Grant choose the. I had three off seasons. I let him choose two of the three. Uh, he elected to blue ball all the Chiefs fans that have been asking for uh for the off season wish list. I'm going to give you guys satisfaction. We are doing the Chiefs this week. Jaguars. We are also doing Seahawks fans. I am sorry. You are going to have to wait. Um, but. Uh. Yeah, so I've had to redo these. Everett, Everett, I have to. I'm sorry, I have to pause you. Um, we have a hero in the building of the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings wide receiver KJ Osborne helped pull a man from a burning car Sunday night before carrying him to safety and helping to save his life. Everett, you have a hero on your team. Oh my, KJ Osborne. My God. Round where, of where, fucking applause. My God. Shout out. Just came you, from Shefty. Just came from Shefty. Just from Shefty? Just came from Shefty. So we want a quick shout out. To just KJ a round Osborne. of applause. Give him a round of applause. Sorry sorry for the interruption, folks. Back to the offseason. I mean, that, that deserves an interruption. Like, I, I had to pause you. I had to. I had to. I didn't have a choice. A burning a burning car. It takes I, balls. That, that requires more than balls. It, you know, that takes Viking grit to do that. So shout yeah. out KJ. But okay, back to offseason. Wow. Uh, I've had to redo these because of the the uh, events that have transpired today and free agency uh, with these two teams. But uh, hopefully it still works. I think it should be fine. Uh, Chiefs and Jaguars are today's off-season wish lists we're probably also going to have to be putting up more of these so you guys should all be happy because with the off-season taking up i'm not going to be able to keep up with all the moves and it's just going to ruin everything so we're going to have to get them out before the off-season really starts so we should be finishing up pretty soon and with that we'll probably go into draft stuff and uh what teams should do in the draft and what players are like you know just position rankings anyways Chiefs offseason wish list. Cut LaMichael P. Ryan, Danny Shelton, and Marquez Valdez Scantling. Trade Clyde Edwards Alaire. Restructure Justin Reed, Joe Tooney, and Travis Kelsey. Extend slash renegotiate Chris Jones. Resign Juju Smith Schuster, Juan Thornhill, Derek Nadi, Jarek McKinnon. Andrew Wiley and Orlando Brown and sign Cleveland Farrell, Chase Daniels, Jalen Guyton, and Darius Slayton. Yeah, as a Chargers fan, I was kind of hoping you were going to throw in force Patrick Mahomes into retirement at the end there, but <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. We, we, we move. We move. I think I, for whatever reason, I think Andy Reid loves like the oldest physical quarterback in the NFL to be on his team. I think he was probably shaking fists at the air when he didn't get Tom Brady to come be the backup to Patrick Mahomes. Uh, so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> Brady wins his eighth as Mahomes is backup. I would, I, Oh my God. Uh, but, but 
they get Chase Daniels, uh, notorious for doing absolutely nothing and making a lot of money. Wait, they, uh, they got Chase Daniels? No, I'm saying they oh, should sign oh, Chase Daniels. Oh, 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 I was about to say, whoa, traitor alert. If he goes to the fucking Chiefs, you're dead to me forever. <laughs> yeah, I have him signing him, though. Uh, I, I think that that Cleland Farrell, I think that's just a good death pick, obviously did nothing. He was the third overall pick, if you can believe that, if you remember that. He was the third overall pick, Cleland Farrell. I remember Uh I think that he's just a good depth signing. Won't cost much. Jalen Guyton, uh, you said he tore his ACL last year, so he probably won't cost as much, but still good, good depth there. Darius Slayton, also good depth. Uh, keep Juju. Obviously, they 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 drafted a wide receiver last year. I think you can build off of that. Uh, I think that is really important to keep Jerick McKinnon. By the way, people don't agree, might not agree with me, and obviously he is a running back, resigning him, and he is old. But I do think that he is kind of a staple there at that position, especially with Pacheco now taking up the one roles. I think that he'd just be a good running back just to kind of have there and rotate in. Um, but yeah, I people won't agree with me with cutting ball. I mean, worst case Stanley. scenario is Tajay Spears is the chief. That is actually the worst case scenario. Oh my god. Um, but. Cutting Marquez Valdez Scantling, by the way, people probably don't agree with me on that, but it is a ten. It's nine million dollars in he cap right so there. So much money, I and like he's not the number one wide receiver you're paying. He's not even going to be the number two. So why pay him ten million dollars when? Did he? You're not going to be the Super Bowl. I don't. I don't. No, he did not. Oh no, maybe he did. I think he had like one catch. Yeah, I, I honestly don't even remember him getting a target. Not going to lie. Um, so I think that he should he should just be gone personally. Yeah, it might as well. All right. Jaguars offseason wish list, and we'll end the episode after this. Uh, <clears throat> I originally had the Jaguars re-signing uh, Evan Ingram. They franchise tagged him today, so not much has really changed outside of that. Uh, but I, I have to figure out how to pronunciate this guy's name real quick. Nice, nice. Yeah, I... I, I, I uh, Sick. Okay, so Jaguars offseason wish list: trade Shaquille Griffin, re-sign Jawan Taylor, Marvin Jones, and Trey Herndon, restructure Cam Robinson and Darius Williams, cut Rayshon Jenkins, EJ Perry, and Daryl Williams, sign Marquise Goodwin, Ethan Pozik, Von Bell, and Greedy Williams, and tender Riley Patterson. I mean, Vaughn Bell in Jacksonville, I, you know, looking out for, for a Buckeye. I'm not sure if he'd want to do that as a person, but you know what, for, for the team and looking <laughs> at it from that angle, I could be good for his career. Not sure how great it'd be for his um, mental health. I, I also, we can I also, Vaughn. we can go. I also have, I also had Jimmy Ward. If you, if you just feel like you want to switch it up real quick and just take out Von Bell, Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward was the other person that I was going to have the other safety because he doesn't, if, if if they won't let him move back to safety on the 49ers, they're going to, uh, he's going to ask to be released or traded. And he costs a little bit less than Von Bell. He's a bit older though. So I could see that if they just want to have a veteran there, but um, Rayshon Jenkins was their starting safety last year, Mm -hmm. having him released and then picking up Von Bell. So obviously you're training up out there. I think Von Bell is just a better safety. Probably could get him for maybe a little bit less too, but we'll see. I think uh, we we got some interesting de- decisions to make. If you're Jacksonville, there are some pieces you can go around. Remember, they're adding Calvin Ridley, so that's they got already him back. a big name free agent signing. I guess you can count it a free agent signing for this year. I still consider the best free agent pickup in the MLB for next off season is going to be the Dodgers when we get Walker Bueller back. I think that would be the best free agent pickup, but yeah, I, I do think as, as a charger fan, I know well more than most people, uh, they got some cooking down in Duval. Okay. They, yeah, they, they, they do cooking. Kirk. They really do. Christian Kirk. They tag in, tagging Ingram, keep him on for a year. So they got to pass a receiving core of Christian Kirk. Calvin Ridley, Evan Ingram, and ETN, because he kind of counts as a receiver too. So uh, things are looking great, and they just won a playoff game. Uh, 
So yeah. Cap situation. I honestly was trying to figure out their cap situation. They don't have much cap for being a really, really young team. So I had, I literally could not figure out who the hell was getting paid on that team. Because somebody has a massive contract, and I'm assuming Cam it's Robinson Christian Kirk. and Christian Kirk. And you can't cut Cam Robinson because you get negative cap space. So, yeah, yeah I'd it's say, I'd say the, they're Shaq, uh, Shaq Griffin signing. He's getting traded. been the most efficient when yeah. it happened at the time. Uh, All right, but... <laughs> With that, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Rate us five stars on Spotify. You can find us at Waterway Pod on YouTube, TikTok, and on Twitter. Please make sure you subscribe, like, and favorite. Follow us on all social platforms. You can find our personal handles on Twitter right down below right here. With that, Waterboy's out.